Hello Masoka Universe. Last one before the international break. Uh, let's run through the leagues and I'm really planning to go through all the top 15 leagues plus the, the uh, leagues where we have um, teams in the Champions League. Um, I determined it by the current standing, not by the entry list for this season, but really taking into account how the teams were in Europe. And we had a flip-flop this uh, week. The German teams overtook Italy, so now Germany is in third place. So you will see Spain, England, Germany, Italy, France, and then you'll see how the list goes. I am also planning, and this is gonna be probably a long video, I'm also planning to look at the chances, maybe uh, less commentary on the matches um, in each league, uh, but I'm gonna look at the standings um, and we're gonna look at the chances of where they stand now uh, and how they have changed. Um, because, you know, it's always interesting where things are now that we know a little bit more. I mean, the last time we did this in September, it was not as clear cut yet because a lot of games to be played. And there was still beginning of the season ratings. Now it's a little bit more. I'm wearing my Liverpool away jersey. I really like this one. And again, those straps are not red. Look closer. Those are little German flags going down there, which I still don't get why, but it's a beautiful shirt. And yeah, Liverpool is still the unbeaten team number one in Europe. So let's see, the last time they were just by a hair not favorite. Let's see how it goes, but we were not starting at the Premier League. I said La Liga is first. And the last match day was actually quite an interesting one where we had Real Betis against Eibar 1-1, um, Leganes losing to Levante then, we talked Real Madrid Granada, where Real Madrid for the first time could actually convince offensively, however defensively again some question because Granada came back into the game and only in the last minute. Uh, James Rodriguez pulled it away. We have the first goal by um, Eden Azar. It was the 2-0 and we had a wonderful goal by Modric. I think, I think all three Goals for Real Madrid were really nice. The first one, a great pass by Bale to Benzema. Second one, uh, the uh, pass of Valverde to um, Azar, who then lobbed it over the goalkeeper and a great shot by Modric. If you haven't seen the highlights, that's truly worth watching. Uh, it was a Real Madrid team that was a, a joy to watch for once. Uh, Valencia 2-1 against Alaves. Um, yeah, more... Uh, not really that much trouble. Also, Suna beat Villarreal 2-1. Uh, Real Mallorca uh, Espanyol 2-0. Um, it's really getting tough for Espanyol. Uh, gotta be said, a little bit relief for Real Mallorca. Celta Vigo. Aspas gets a, a winner against Athletic Club. Atletico Madrid still cannot find a scorer. I think it's between, for me, Alaska and Atletico Madrid. Who needs a striker more? I actually think Atletico Madrid Truly, I think so. Uh, they, if they would have a strike on front, I think Atletico Madrid should be probably considered favorites in this season, but neither Diego Costa nor Alvaro Morata can be uh, relied on to score. Getafe, a big win over Real Sociedad. Uh, Real Sociedad was leading in that one and would have been um, bit, uh, you know, close to the top of, of the table, uh, if not nah, just about, but uh, they would be top three. They would have won that one. And then Barcelona Sevilla, um, where one of the biggest talking points, I didn't even register yesterday and um, by extension this morning, that there were two red cards for Barcelona late, late in the game, one for uh, last man on uh, Chicharito, which is okay. And then Dembele just told the referee he's bad, very bad, and got sent off. This Dembele guy, if I was Barca, I would do my best to get rid of him. Absolutely. Uh, he as Mercury as a talent he wasn't. He sh scored a great goal, but there's something not quite right with him. And he reminds me a lot of Mario Palotelli. So in the table, we have Real Madrid against Barcelona. Uh, ahead of Barcelona in first place. What more do you want? I gotta say, and I'm looking now, uh, when do we have the Classico? Yes, it is on Saturday, October 26th, Austrian National Day. At one o'clock, an early kick of him. So mark the calendar. That will be the biggest game, I think, in the next stage coming up. Uh, right behind is Atletico Madrid. So we have really one, two, three. The three big ones at the moment are on top. And 
probably stay on top like that. Granada deserves the uh, high rating at 14. And then we have a really dense midfield, I have to say, starting at Real Sociedad and Sevilla uh, at 13 points each. You know, Sevilla, maybe they can get a little bit more consistent. I said one of the more frustrating sides in uh, Spain. Athletic Club in Valencia, uh, 12, also not that bad. And then I think the midfield via Real Levante Osasuna, Getafe, Real Valladolid. And we're already at the bottom. And you see uh, between um, space 14 and space 7, it's only three points, really tight. And we'll see other leagues that are similar tight. Alaves 8, Real Mallorca 7, Espanyol 5, and the only one, Leganes, where it really doesn't look good let's look at the chances also by giving by 538 and we still have barcelona 48 percent to win the liga uh but not as emphatic as they used to be at the beginning of the, of the season but still uh expected to be just four points ahead of real madrid um who have a 30 percent chance of winning it and 30 percent for atletico madrid uh only outside chances for sevilla and real sociedad to make it in there and if we go to the Bottom of the table for relegation, yeah. Alaves, Espanyol, Mallorca, Leganes look pretty strong uh, to be relegated. Also, Valladolid and Levante are kind of in there. But, you know, uh, the first was to have a uh, realistic chance, meaning uh, more than a percent is actually Real Sociedad. So, um, kind of interesting seeing that one develop. It will definitely get clearer as the season moves on. Most of what I'm taking away from it, Barcelona and Real Madrid will probably battle for this league, which we expected from the beginning. Premier League. Uh, big results this weekend in the Premier League, I have to say. Uh, the first one, definitely Brighton um, winning over Spurs. It's only a dislocated elbow. It still looks so ugly and I'm really curious how long uh, Yoris will, will be out. I actually fear when I saw this that this is ending at least a half season or whatever. And then you've got to ask, is this, is, isn't this the career? Because Yoris has been playing for a long time and is also not that great. But, you know, some team in France will surely will, will, will pick him up. Spurs is a mess, as we will see in the table. Burnley, Everton. Everton is a similar mess, to be honest. Uh, losing 1-0. Another big uh, team that has a lot of tradition, not doing well. Liverpool getting a last-minute win over Leicester City, staying perfect. Uh, Norwich completely annihilated by Aston Villa 5-1. That was a surprising result. Watford gets a point against Sheffield United. And West Ham in a very dreary performance. They had the 1-0 in the second half, but then the Crystal Palace scored two. Big result on Sunday. Manchester City losing at home to Wolves to two goals in uh, late in the second half. Um, what's wrong with Manchester City, one might ask? Well, the defending is wrong. That's for sure. Either... They blow you out of, uh, out of the park or they just kind of find it and can make stupid defensive mistakes. And yeah, or they just try to find themselves, go for the Champions League. We'll see about that. Um, Arsenal beats Bournemouth 1-0 and Arsenal is really not that bad this season. Uh, they don't play all that well. I mean, the, the one time I saw it was actually ridiculous at, at Watford. But, you know, they're in there in the Europa League, they're toying with the opposition. So Southampton loses big to Chelsea. So Chelsea also finding their way. And I have to say this is a Chelsea side that people uh, start liking a little bit more because, you know, it's all this young talent in there. And unless you're from America, um, I think you can get behind this Chelsea for once. And then Newcastle beating Manchester United is the joke of the uh, evening in, in, in a way. I mean... Manchester United is not Manchester United any, anymore and we can make definitely a call who is worse off at the moment Milan or Manchester United I almost want to say Manchester United uh, simply for a fact they have nine points after eight games and Milan as we'll see has nine points after seven games so slightly better Milan slightly but Manchester United really absolute ugly if you look now in the table we talk about Liverpool on top Manchester City Arsenal in third, Leicester in fourth, Chelsea and Crystal Palace is also up there. So um, that's a surprise. Uh, Burnley, West Ham uh, ahead of Spurs uh, and Bournemouth. And here we're already adding, uh, entering the midfield. So I will say Burnley starts the midfield. Uh, that goes, yeah, 
Should, should, should we say until Wolves at 10, then Manchester United and Sheffield already we are looking at relegation battle here. Maybe not quite yet, uh, but you know, if United continues this way, uh, Sheffield United is also with 9 points, Brighton with 9, Aston Villa 8, Newcastle now is not in the relegation sense anymore, Southampton though is nearing it, uh, and Everton, Norwich and Watford mm, don't look all that great, I'm actually surprised about Norwich, but also Watford, I think there are also two teams that I don't, didn't necessarily expect in there, but still a lot of games to be played, let's see uh, the chances, Liverpool is now favourite, 56%. 41% for Manchester City, so uh, that win made a big swing. For the first time, Liverpool are favourites. Just uh, checking. Yes, for the first time, Liverpool are favourites, and it's really a big swing. Uh, it was more or less uh, the chances flip-flopped on that one, and you needed eight points for that advantage. Um, Chelsea, the only other team that they give chances, but this, I'm not sure how reliable these are. I, as, as far as I know the SPR rating, I wouldn't pay too much credence there. And when we look what the teams to be relegated, yeah, uh, let's say more than 20%, uh, Southampton, Brighton, Sheffield United, Newcastle, Aston Villa, Watford and Norwich. And yeah, I think that Watford is the one that is a little bit surprising to everyone here. Then we move on to Germany, where also a lot of things happen. And Germany on top is absolutely nuts. Uh, first of all, Hertha gets another win. Uh, Hertha started badly and I have three wins in, in a row. So um, they're getting on a roll. Leverkusen Leipzig was the first uh, big game that ended in a draw. Bayern loses at home to Hoffenheim. Uh, that opened up the table big time. Uh, Mainz winning at Paderborn. Uh, Dortmund against Freiburg. Again, Dortmund cannot find the win, and Freiburg with the win could have gotten top spot. Was not quite to be. And Schalke also could have gotten top spot. However, the last minute equalizer to Köln. So who takes top spot? Gladbach with a 5-1 win over Augsburg and Wolfsburg with an almost horrible performance wins it also 1-0 in the second spot. And the real fun thing is that the Gladbach coach Marco Rose was uh, the coach of Salzburg last season. Salzburg finished first in Austria and Wolfsburg is now coach, is coached by Oliver Glasner who was the last coach last season. So those two coaches are uh, again in 1-2. and two. It's absolutely amazing. And to top it off, Gladbach lost to Wolfsburg, who we will see is currently number three in Austria, 4-0 at home. What that means for the Austrian league, you can imagine. Also, I think of the top five teams, or the top four teams, all four have some relationship with Red Bull Salzburg. So... Uh, at the moment, they are still in, in Austria, and we will we'll get to the Austrian league. There's really this starting thing. Actually, we are quite good because Austria Austrian teams have had a loss to German teams in a long time. Uh, the uh, match day is rounded out by Frankfurt uh, playing a 2 2 against Bremen. I don't know what to think much of Frankfurt. I think for me, Frankfurt is only a mid table team this season. Let's look at the crazy table. Uh, Gladbach 16, Wolfsburg 15, and then 14 points uh, we get from uh, um, 3 to 7. Bayern, Leipzig, Freiburg, Schalke, Leverkusen. And Dortmund is also not that far off. I mean, there you're in 8 spots, but you're only 4 points off the pace. I mean, that is something you're not out of reach. So if Dortmund just can get a run going, I think they can quickly find themselves in top spot again. But same thing goes for Bayern. Uh, I still would expect those two finish one and two, but let's see. Frankfurt 11 is honestly disappointing. Hertha now gets in there and now we, we are starting relegation zone. Bremen, Hoffenheim 8, Mainz 6, Augsburg 5 and Augsburg to me seems to be primed to go down. Um, Düsseldorf 4, Union 4, Köln 4 and Paderborn 1. Um, yeah, Union, Paderborn, Augsburg uh, would be the three and maybe Augsburg gets the really relegation spot, but you know, lots of games being played. Let's see what the chances are according to 538. I mean, Bayern is humongous favorites at 75% or 76% even now. 
Leipzig 8%, Dortmund 8%, Leverkusen 4, Gladbach 2%, the rest is given no chance, but it is Bayerns to lose, we all know that. And the relegation battle is also uh, much clearer than in the other leagues, with Mainz at 14%, and then Fortuna, Köln, Augsburg, Union, Paderborn. Pretty much what I would expect, I mean, I would not necessarily expect Mainz in there, although there's always a danger that they can fall into the cat category. Let's go to my favorite league, Serie A. Uh, also interesting result, one huge one that I talked at length about it uh, this morning. Spal Parma 1-0, uh, Hellas Verona, Sampdoria 2-0, troubles for Sampdoria mounting and they say with you Francesco. Uh, the other Genoa team also really, really ba uh, bad, but you know, against the Milan that was not better. Uh, maybe the win will give them something. Maybe we have a new coach. Let's see how this will go. It was a dreary affair again in the video that I had uh, posted today. Uh, I'll talk about that also at length. Fiorentina beats Udinese, continues their good run. I'd like to see that. Atalanta wins 3-1 against Lecce. Bologna Lazio. Um, also, that was a uh, result that I kind of expected. I didn't expect Roma playing only one more against Cagliari. Also, Torino, nil-nil against Nap Napoli. Napoli uh, has, has to be careful to not lose ground. Uh, and then Juve with a huge win over Inter in an absolutely amazing match. That was one of those where it's a hype match and it lived up to the hype. And interestingly, Brescia Sassuolo, I would like to know why, but probably because the owner of Sassuolo died. Uh, was moved to um, December 18, so we have that right before Christmas. Uh, so in the table now, we have for the first time this season, no, not for the first time this season, but for, uh, for a while, Juventus is on top ahead of Inter, Atalanta is also there, and Napoli is in fourth spot. I mean, again, those are the four teams that were the top four also last season. Roma and Lazio, Cagliari and Fiorentina uh, behind, and of those two, of those teams, I think Fiorentina is by far the most fun to watch. Uh, if you have a chance, watch Fiorentina. Uh, the combination of Ribery and Chiesa is just an amazing one. I really love Chiesa. Roma, people say they're fun to watch. I watched them now a few, few times. I was not that uh, impressed. Then I think midfield starts kind of Torino, Verona, Bologna, Parma, Milan. And Milan is the worst of the lot. But just ahead of Udinese, uh, Sassuolo, Brescia, Spal, Lecce, Genoa, and then Sampdoria. It's really dark days for Genoa. Um, let's see if one of those or both can stay up. What are the chances? Uh, Juve now. Of course, 66% uh, chance of winning the league. Inter is given 15%, Napoli 11%. Uh, Napoli still has a good rating, so that kind of keeps them in the running. I'm getting a little bit worried about Napoli, to be honest. 2% Atalanta and Roma each. Um, I cannot believe that Milan is here given a mid-table, but again, that's the ranking. I, If Milan finishes mid-table, this is the best. I don't think Milan will finish in Europe. Maybe they don't even want to finish in Europe to be allowed another spending spree or whatever. Let's see how it goes. Uh, towards the bottom, we have actually quite some uh, teams that are in danger of being relegated according to 530. It starts Sassuolo, don't think so. Parma, yeah, that might get tight. Brescia, 24%. Udine, 23%. Genoa, 27%. Verona, 27%. Sampdoria is in true trouble, at 30%. And Spal and Lecce. Uh, the ones. So let's see where it, where it goes. Um, I could imagine Lecce actually staying up there. Um, let's see. Let's see. I don't want to make a call yet, but I think one team from Genoa will go down probably. To France we go. Uh, <laughs> I didn't even tell you. I told you about the Vier uh, Montpellier Monaco jersey matchup. I didn't tell you the result. We'll get to it. Amiens um, beats Marseille 3-1. And again, uh, I don't get France. Uh, there is no clear pattern uh, these days. Um, the only pattern is the PSG is winning again. And yeah, they had one loss and that was one that is now a mid-table team. It's unbelievable. Brest wins over Metz 2-0. Dijon, Strasbourg 1-0. Uh, Montpellier, Monaco, that's the one, 3-1. One. Nantes gets itself high up with a 1-0 over Nice. Toulouse, Bordeaux 1-3. Lille, Nîmes 2-2. 
Also interesting. Ren. Just when you thought that Ren might get something in the last few weeks, they are also falling, uh, losing 1-0 to Reims, and then the Derby Saint-Étienne winning over Lyon. And Lyon is in free fall in the table, as we will see. Um, the table is now led by PSG quite comfortably, not at 19 points. Angers, 16. Uh, Bordeaux, 15. Lille, 15. All right, I mean, Angers is maybe not quite in there, but all the others are basically big names. Reims used to be a big name, 14. Montpellier has been champions not too long ago. Marseille, 13. Nice, 13. Rennes, 12. Only they have been second not too long ago. Now they're down. Amiens moving up. Brest also moving up. Saint Etienne also moving up. All at the expense of Lyon, who suddenly find themselves in 14th place with nine points after nine games. And that's a team that actually played well in the Champions League. And I don't get it. Nîmes 9, Monaco 9. I mean, uh, we're really talking relegation battle here. Toulouse 9, Dijon 8, and Metz 8. It is super tight. There are um, six teams, seven teams within a point on the bottom of, of the table. This is probably the closest that we will see the bottom of the table here. And I just cannot believe that Lyon is that far down there. Let's look at the chances. Uh, yeah, PSG has wrapped up the league with 994%. Lille and Nantes give them outside chances. This is, yeah, PSG and then it's the rest. The relegation by battle is way more interesting and I think it starts at Toulouse at 27%, Brest 31%, Dijon 35% and Metz 37 Note there are the two promoted teams in there. Uh, it's going to be interesting uh, when um, how the French league develops overall but I have to say the French league is the one where I really don't want to make any predictions it's almost like except for PSG it's almost like you gamble every time and you now a league that we haven't looked at at a long longer time is the Russian Premier League um, Notable results here are uh, Zenit winning 3-1 against Ural, Lokomotiv against Arsenal Tula 2-1, CSK losing at home to Rostov 1-3 in Krasnodar 2-1 over Spartak, so those, those are the big um, games were all on Sunday. In the table we have Lokomotiv uh, and Rostov and Krasnodar and Zenit all at 26 points, so incredibly tight on top and CSK just behind. Then there's the cut. Ufa, uh, Arsenal... Uh, I, Anton, I, I'm a little bit surprised that Spark that Moscow is so far down and Dynamo Moscow is almost in a relegation battle. Uh, if you look at the chances here, here I still have 538. I, you know, 538, I will give until the top 10 since Ukraine, I don't get, I'll put Austria in there and then I'll stop with that one. But we have Zenit at 48%, Krasnodar 23%. Given how Krasnodar is playing in Europe, you won't believe it. Uh, really, Lok uh, 14% and CSK 13% to make it. Um, it is really the. I think Rostov is given a chance also at 3 3%, but it's really kind of. At the Rostov, it ends. Spartak Moscow dares to drop off, and probably Spartak could fall down further. Portugal didn't play this weekend, so we still have Family Cow on top ahead of Benfica. And uh, let's look at the chances. We don't have any um, games to talk talk about. Uh, who is the favorite to win? Porto, 58% ahead of Benfica, 38%. Sporting, only 2%. And when I saw Sporting against Lusk, uh, honestly, there is not more coming from them. Family Cow is now a top five which means they would finish in europe uh let's see how it goes it's not quite that nice fairy tale because you know there's a lot of involvement from real madrid and loan players but still this is a newly promoted side uh still a story uh to behold moving on to the next league we are going to belgium where club bruges is starting to dominate uh they beat Ghent for nil. We also have Anderlecht uh, getting a rare win these days, as we will see. Under, uh, Anderlecht is in the middle of nowhere. Um, other uh, results: Standard only played a 2-2 against Antwerp, and Genk a 2-1 uh, against Royal Excelsior. So uh, uh, there were two near the top table clashes. The, the top four 
uh, play, played each other with Bruges now being three points in one game less ahead of Standard than Ghent and Antwerp, Mechelen and Genk there and the big boy from Anderlecht barely holds on, is like a very close to relegation zone. Uh, if you look at the chances here, Club Brugge 53% of winning the league, Genk 16%, uh, Liege 9% and Ghent 7%. So that's the top there. Um, I really wonder, I don't know too much about Belgian soccer, but I would like to know what happened with uh, Anderlecht. Uh, the Eredivisie is making a huge comeback uh, thanks to the exploits of Ajax and to a certain degree also uh, the other Dutch teams. It is a two-horse race with both of the big boys winning, uh, Ajax against Den Haag and PSV 4-1 against uh, Venlo. Sitter beats Feyenoord 4-2, so Feyenoord, as you will see, is kind of sitting low in the table where Arsenal, uh, where Arsenal Ajax and PSV sit with 23 points each. Alkmaar is in third, they are in the Europa League and then in the playoffs, you know, there's Vitesse, Sparta Rotterdam ahead of Feyenoord. Uh, Utrecht and Heracles Fan are only sitting in ninth spot. So that's interesting. The favorites to win. And take this with salt. I think PSV is much closer to Ajax. Although when I saw how Ajax played at PSV, uh, they were actually much better, just couldn't finish it. Still, 78% seems too high for me. I think PSV has a chance, 20%. Alkma only won 1% and that ends it. It's really a two-horse race and it will probably remain so until the teams meet uh, in spring in Amsterdam. Ukraine we have not looked at so far. Uh, here are last week's Last weekend's results, uh, I want to Shakhtar Donetsk wins at Dnipro. This is not Dnipro, Dnipro Petrovsk. There's a whole story how this team went up and this is the replacement team and so on. There's a video, find it on YouTube. Uh, Dnipro, Dnipro Petrovsk is a gonna, more or less, sad story, to be honest. Dynamo Kiev 4-0 at Koval Vika. Uh, we know Alec Alexander from the Europa League. They are uh, also in there. And the surprise team so far is Desna against Olympic Donetsk. In the table we have Shakhtar ahead of Desna and Dynamo Kiev all with 20 points, Alexander with 19, so kind of uh, tight on the top. We also have not looked at Turkey this season. That's also, uh, as we will see, standings that are kind of surprising. Fenerbahce losing 1-0, Antalya this weekend. Um, we have Galatasaray only managing 0 against Alan, um, Ankara. Trabzon wins 2-1 and Bajakshi also wins 2-1. But if we look now at the table, it's Alanya that leads with 14 points, Sivaspor 12, Trabzon 12, Konya 12. So then the first big boy, Fenerbahce, Galatasaray is all the way down to 10th and Besiktas, uh, who won on the weekend against Alanya, has to be said, also only uh, with 8 points. So yeah. Uh, slightly surprising standings here. Let's uh, look at the predictions. It's still Galatasaray uh, with 13%, Trabzon 19, Bajakshi 15, Fenerbahce 12 and Besiktas 9. Uh, this is the most open of the leagues that we've seen so far. Austria, as we said, Austria is now a top league, so we got to talk about this one as well. Uh, Salzburg toys with the opposition, 6-0 against Altak. Rapid gets a late win which was surprising. Admira 3-1. Um, Wolfsburg 4-0 over St. Paul and Alask with a comeback win against Hartberg. If only they had a striker, then it would have been a similar story uh, scoreline as Wolfsburg and Salzburg. Uh, and Austria Wien gets a little bit off the schneid with a, a late win against Sturm Graz who are also a little bit in trouble. If you look at the table, uh, it's, you know, the playoff system where the top go in the playoff, the bottom play for relegation. Salzburg clearly leads that one. Then Lask and Wolfsburg, 23 and 22. Rapid is hanging surprisingly in there. Sturm, Hartberg, that's where it kind of the battle begins. Austria seems could move in there. I cannot quite see it. St. Bolton, uh, Mödling and um, Altach, those are the teams that I'm look, looking at for relegation. If you look at the standings, Salzburg 92% will win the league. I think everyone in Austria knows. But Lusk and Wolfsburg are in there. They are also, I think, ahead of the rest. 
Rapid, um, yeah, can probably make a European spot, and as I said, Admir St. Pölten doesn't look good. And now we have a few more leagues. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's, nah, five. We'll go to the Czech Republic, where, um, let's just look at the table. Now at the moment, it's Slavia ahead of Pilsen, and Slavia has a sizable lead already. Uh, and then Sparta Praha is maybe slowly moving up, but it's Bo uh, Boleslav and Banik Ostrava and Jablonets and Slovacko that are ahead of the other Prague Giants. Um, if we go to the Danish Super League, there was the uh, Copenhagen Derby, where Brondby won against 3-1 against Copenhagen. And since Midtjylland won against Silkeborg, we have Midtjylland now having a sizable lead with four points again ahead of Copenhagen. Brondby is only in sixth place, OB fourth. So yeah, also kind of you see it's leaning towards Midtjylland uh, over Copenhagen, but still, it's still early in the season. Another league that we got to look at is Greece. Uh, and while it doesn't look like it, it's, it seems to be a two-horse race between Olympiakos and Pauk. Uh, Olympiakos has been uh, near flawless uh, so far. I think only managing uh, that the only draw that had was, was against Pauk, and Pauk had a draw in the derby. Um, as well, uh, and that's why Xanti can move in there. But I think it's between those two teams. A little bit surprising that Ofi is in there, Xanti is in there, and Ike also. On the weekend, we had Pauk winning and Olympiakos winning at Aris. Um, very low down is Panathinaikos uh, at 10 spots. From what I hear, they are in a bad spot overall. Let's move to another Superliga. That's the uh, Serbian Superliga, where we have a Red Star, Jervena uh, Svezda at 27 points in top place. Vojvodina is 25%. Partizan losing at home, and that's why they lose kind of the touch uh, with uh, Jervena Svezda. And they are only in fifth place at the moment, but it's still quite tight. On top of that table, they have also a similar system as in Austria and Belgium with a playoff uh, on, on top. When we are in Serbia, let's also look at Croatia, where uh, we had we have Hajduk split leading one point ahead of Dinamo Zagreb, but Dinamo Zagreb has a um, point less. Still, uh, seems to be that there could be a battle. If you ask me, I think it will be Dinamo Zagreb who will win the title. Osijek and Rijeka are also in there. So that ends it for the European leagues very quickly. Just um, Copa Libertadores, we had the um, um, first legs in the semifinals where River beats Boca, last is final, 2-0, and Grêmio against Flamengo ends 1-1. So let's see, we have a Argentina versus Brazil final. I hope Flamengo will make it and then, yeah, maybe against Boca, that would be a big one, but even against the River, that could be an awesome final in South America. Poor, this was a long journey. I hope you enjoyed that. I told you it's going to be a long video. Uh, let, let me know your thoughts on the video, how you like the percentages given there. I really like 538, but although I don't always agree with what they're um, saying in their ratings. Funny uh, side note, I noted today. Uh, when I look at the chances of winning the Europa League, that Lask has a higher chance of winning the Europa League than both Manchester City and Bayern Munich. We are a power in Europe. Think about it. Anyway, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and this run through Europe. Um, it is lengthy, but I think it's worth it to kind of get a feeling of where things are. Um, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of it. And I'll have one day break and then we'll go to the international break. And up until then, bye. Hey there, I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that would be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will keep you updated with all things that are rotating in my soccer universe. With that, I wish you a wonderful day. Bye.